What's up, y'all? I've been debating whether to do this video for a while now, but my intrusive thoughts got the best of me. And here we are. Got the gloves on. And I got a nice ribeye steak here. This is 400 grams. It's about nine tenths of a pound. And it looks very nice. I paid a decent chunk of money for it. Actually, it's all relative, but this cost me about $85. So pretty expensive. Usually, I would enjoy this with a knife and a fork. But today I'm going in like a Neanderthal. Hands, ripping it out, just, have you, I've never done it before. I've never eaten a steak with my hands and just ripped out pieces of flesh. But we're gonna do it today. Um, this steak actually looks really nice. There was, there were no options for rareness level. So I'm, I don't know, it's a mystery. We'll have to fight, figure out once I take that first chunk out, uh, if it's medium rare, which I'm hoping it is. Now, it might not look that impressive to you, but um, it, it's not very thick. But this is one of the biggest steaks I've seen sold at a restaurant. One of the biggest steaks I've seen in Korea. Big steaks are not really a thing over here. Uh, even if you go to the grocery store, they don't really just sell big old steaks like you can find in America. I guess you could go to a butcher shop and they could, you know, custom cut it for you but before i get into it though let me just show you a little close-up since i have this camera rolling it's smelling really good up in here a uh, nice crust all around i i'm thinking there's some butter rosemary garlic action kind of uh spooned on top and uh yeah i'm just i'm looking forward to getting into it not exactly looking forward to acting the fool up here but it is what it is going in where should i start we got a more fatty part here, less fatty part here. I'll start with this. Mmm. Oh, so snap. My bad blacked out again there's something visceral about that i'm not lying i'm not lying here there's something primal about that and it caught me off guard i wasn't expecting that you know steak that's cut up into nice little strips or nice little you know chunks they're cool but there's some this hits different let me just tell you i'm, I'm not i'm not fooling you It's satisfying, man. On top of that, it's also really tasty. About a medium up in this part. It's juicy. If it's flavorsome, it's meaty. It's just that caveman. I'm feeling like Stanley Yelnats out here. Just this is this is quite the experience. Let me take a bite from this side. Mm. Much more fatty over here. It was a th thicker part. So it's also more rare, as you can see. Mm. This is Hanu, by the way. Supposedly. Which is Korean beef. Which is typically pretty good. Now, there are a couple things I want to talk about. In this video. Yep. Well, right off the bat, ribeyes. I know it's that classic thing where you got to love the ribeye steak if you love steaks. This is why I get a filet mignon over a ribeye.
if the fat isn't cooked perfectly, it can be a little bit, you can do some extra chews is what I'm saying. I've never had extra chews with a nice filet mignon, uh, tenderloin. Anyway, some things I want to talk about. Well, I've got some buttery hands, but um, yeah, intrusive thoughts. Let's talk about them. Everyone's got them. What's the deal with them? Hmm. Why? Why is that a thing? How did that come about? It's like, it's like for me, I'm scared of heights, right? Every time I get near a, a height, you know, I'm like, well, should I just jump off? I could jump off if I wanted to. Not every time, but sometimes that passes through my mind and then I get freaked out, I get vertigo, I take five steps back. I'm like, nah, I don't mess with that. I've been around some crazy heights before and I like stiffen up into a board. One interesting thing I heard, I'm not sure if it's true from, it was from Nico from uh, Corridor Digital. He said, the fear of heights is actually not the fear of falling. It's the fear of jumping. Anyway. That one gets me sometimes. I, I was trying to think of some examples. I don't, I couldn't really think of that many that I can share. But, um, one of them, like it's more of like an impulse that I have sometimes or just like, I don't know what to call it. I'm walking down the street in public and I'm like, I just want to start running and not like a running, like a jogging run. I, I want to sprint. I don't remember the last time I sprinted. It was probably eight years ago. When's the last time you sprinted? I'm talking like 100 meter dash. I don't, I'd like to know my time. Where am I gonna have to test this out at though? I don't have access. I'm not a, you know, it's, it's just like, it's a primal thing. I just wanna like sprint as fast as I can. But if I did that anywhere that's not in a, like a private gym or like a track or something, I would look be looked at as a crazy person. And I might be getting looked at like a crazy person right now for eating this steak like this in front of a bunch of people, but obviously it's different when you get those in-person reactions, like what the? F I mean, I don't want to scare people. And that leads me to a, uh, a story time. Quick little story about a kid who, actually this goes back, let me go back here. We're tasting the rosemary on this one. We had a sprinter in our high school, Naruto style. All right, running down the hallways, each class to class. He was that kid. We had actually one of those kids in our high school. He ran Naruto style everywhere. And I don't know exactly what was going on. You know, I don't have a diagnosis, but that'll tell you hopefully all you need to know. Um, Anyway, when I went, I've talked about my middle school situation before. I went, there were several elementary schools um, in my hometown, two middle schools, one on the good side, one on the bad side. Yeah, it's, there's a pretty good divide. And then one high school. So my middle, my elementary school is on the good side, but the boundaries had it. So it was right on the edge, actually past the edge. And me and like two other people went had to go to the bad middle school. So we're basically like new kids in our own town because all these kids on the bad, in the bad side of town, they knew each other from their elementary schools. And I'm a new kid basically at this and I don't know anybody. Loner, solo dolo out there. And we go to gym class. Now in elementary school, in gym class, you just wear, your clothes, you know, and you kind of run around, roller skate a little bit. I actually ripped my pants down the seam. I was the only kid who didn't know how to roller skate in elementary school. They brought them in. Everyone was 
having a blast and I ripped my pants on the seam. That was embarrassing and actually what I'm, that's another topic though. Uh, what I'm getting at, kind of related in a way. So we go to gym class and now all of a sudden we have PE clothes and we have to change. There's a, the musty, dusty locker rooms that we got to change into our gym clothes and then change back. <clears throat> and uh, the schedule song, the Naruto runner, he's in there. He's my gym class. This is sixth grade. And I go in there not knowing anyone. I'm, I'm changing for the, like, the first time. I'm like, what the frick, man? I don't want to be changing, but it is what it is. Everyone's like, just cool with it. Axe, out the max, body spray. And then I'm starting changing. I'm like, you know, feeling weird. Only one with freaking whitey tidies, man. I didn't know anybody. Like, that's what my parents bought me. I didn't know about boxers. Everyone else wearing boxers, I'm the only one with whitey tidies, except the Naruto runner. I don't want to reveal his full name, but his name is actually Ben. All right, so we got the same damn name. Anyway... You know, I'm kind of getting used to what's going on in this new school. And, um, but like, not making any friends. One day in PE, you know, I'm picking dandelions or something. Everyone else is out doing something. And this kid comes up to me and I, I knew at this point, it's been a, a few weeks in and I'm like, this kid, stay away from this kid. Like he's, something's off. Uh, but I'm just sitting there twiddling my thumbs and he comes up to me and basically like pats me on the back and he's like, it's tough out there, ain't it? And I'm like, hold up. This kid is taking pity on me here. That's, that's when I knew, man. School was just not for me. And it never, never was for the rest of my school days, but. I was like, yeah. That's about it. But in my head, I was just like, wow, I'm a loser. Maybe still am, but I, I just don't care anymore. That's the thing. Um. Anyway, only got a few more bites left. This is a very mighty fine steak. Especially, I I can't lie. I prefer the leaner part. It just less chews. Very satisfying to eat that way. A lot of protein in here, and it's it just. Yeah, I, I don't know. I got some endorphins going on. I did kind of want to mention something else in this video. But seeing as I'm almost done, I'm going to have to save it for another video. These gloves work really well. Now I understand why everyone uses them. <clears throat> Dry hands. That's crazy. All right. Well, that was a cool experience. I feel like every once in a while at home, maybe not at a restaurant, uh, you should eat a steak with your hands. Maybe get these, some of these like nitrile. I think these are gloves. Um, and it's just, I don't know, something very just old school about it. Anyway. I'm about to skate out of here, so thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.